Hey guys, welcome back. It's Sean from Crafted Elements and this is the final video of our resin and wood basic series here on YouTube. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'd suggest you go to our channel here on YouTube and start at module number one, the introduction. We have an entire series, it's 11 different parts, and we go from everything from sourcing wood, making sure you have the right wood, how to prep, prep and treat the wood to put into some of these molds to use with epoxy resin, uh, all the way to the finishing stages and everything in between. So this video is really a video that goes over all topics cumulatively, but in a very quick, efficient manner. I'm not gonna go uh, deep into any particular thing I'm doing. I'm really just doing this as a you watch me top level overview, creating a project from start to finish. But I'm actually gonna be creating four projects in this one video. So it is gonna be a little bit of a longer one. And if you have questions about anything I'm using or anything I'm doing, I highly recommend going back to that module on that particular part in this series, because I guarantee it's answered there. All right. So what am I working on today? Well, it is a beautiful spring day. I've got the windows open. I've got the doors open here in the shop. And these four projects are going to be a little bit different, but of course, all involving epoxy resin and wood. The very first thing we're going to do is a uh, 16 by 12 shakuri board one, using one of our well-used 16 by 12 by one shakuri board molds. It's going to be a wood and resin project. And we're going to take it out, plane it, and shape it with one of our resin templates, or rather one of our acrylic templates. This one is going to be using a preformed uh, shakuri board mold, which is a, a really cool line of molds we here, have here at Craft Elements, and they have integrated handles. So you don't have to shape, you don't have to form, there's a lot, of le lot less post-processing with these molds. You put your wood in, you put your resin in, and you've already got a fully shaped piece that's much quicker to finish, so we're going to use one of these molds today as well. Uh, next, we're going to be using one of our four glass wine uh, flight slash beer flight molds. I had a lot of people asking me to use one of these molds. This one's a little bit trickier because you can definitely use this to make a solid resin piece, uh, a solid resin um, flight board, or you can of course combine it with wooden resin. So I'm going to actually do kind of a mostly resin, some wood piece in this. Uh, and give it kind of an ocean beach theme, which will probably uh, intrigue a lot of the resin artists who may be watching this video. So yeah, stay tuned for that. The very last project and the biggest one we're doing is another small tabletop. We're gonna be using our 36 by 18 by three inch HDPE mold versus the silicone molds. And it's gonna be Star Wars themed. If you followed me at any, for any given, any period of time, whether it's here on YouTube or on Instagram or whatever, um, you probably know that I like Star Wars. And you probably know a lot of our customers and makers like Star Wars, so we're always doing kind of Star Wars themed stuff. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit different. Uh, we're going to be using some inch and, a, inch and three quarter, two inch walnut, I believe, in this one. But we're going to be embedding one of the uh, TIE Fighters in, uh, which is like, if you are familiar with Star Wars, it's like the bad guys of Star Wars, uh, in the resin, uh, in between the river, of uh, the river table essentially. But instead of taking this out and planning it and making a big mess, we're actually going to then top coat this entire thing while it's in the mold with clear resin, effectively creating um, like a scene inside the tabletop, inside the, the cavern, so to speak. Um, and then we're going to pull it out. We're just going to have to plane the bottom and we're literally going to have a basically finished piece almost pulled out of the mold. So that's the plan with that one. Hopefully it works out. We'll see in the end, right? But anyway, yeah, four projects. If you have no idea what the heck I'm talking about, please go back, watch the rest of the Resin Wood series. Uh, otherwise, let's get started. Um, the one thing I do want to mention is I did allude to uh, just a couple minutes ago, but this really is a top level overview. So I'm going to be going a little bit more quicker. I'm not going to be uh, going into different options and explaining why I chose what I chose because it really is something that we covered in previous modules. I can't stress that enough. But otherwise, uh, let's get started. We're going to make some cool stuff and end up with some cool resident wood projects. Thanks for tuning in. All right, I am a sucker for super, super funky walnut. Um, this is some Canadian black walnut and it's got a lot of, uh, I don't say rot, but it's definitely got some unique figure to it. And I find that this type of wood, uh, these, these gnarly pieces that otherwise, you know, before the whole resin wood live edge movement, so to speak, this stuff would have just been thrown out, which is another cool thing. You know, we get a lot of flack here uh, for using resin plastic to make other plastic things or combine resin with wood. But in reality, pieces like this were garbage. 
prior to, you know, live edge furniture and prior to the epoxy resin table, uh, you know, uh, the popularity rather of epoxy resin tables and epoxy resin and wood projects like this, this would have been garbage. This would have been thrown out. Whereas now we can create wicked beautiful things with it um, that we can enjoy and use and, and sell if we have a business, right? So anyway, we're gonna use this piece of walnut. We're gonna use our 16 by 12 mold. We're gonna get this cut up. And the very first thing we're gonna do is pre-measure our wood to cut it to fit. All right, so I know that this mold is 16 inches uh, long, 12 inches wide, one inch high. This wood is a little bit uh, thicker. It's fine. Uh, we're gonna end up playing it down anyway. And I wanna take kind of the funky part of this. Um, I, wanna, I definitely don't wanna lose the funky part of this, right? So what we can do is we can just place it over here um, and decide maybe we'll do something like Something kind of like that. We're gonna have this, this, this cave sort of thing here, and then we're gonna have all this filled with resin. And I'm gonna do this in such a way that I can use our total boat thick set, um, which is gonna be good for one inch pours. I could probably get away with make epoxy with this because it is not a huge amount of volume, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use a thick set. I'm just gonna roughly decide where my starting line is gonna be. And then once we have a line, we can make everything square from there. So I'm gonna find 16. Pretty equivalent there, 16, a little pass here, that's fine. I'm gonna chop this off, chop this off, and then we're gonna come and take uh, some of this off. So we wanna determine uh, 12 inches because we have 12 inches of depth. Now I know our mold is 12 inches and we wanna have kind of a little bit of a river there. So I'm gonna cut it here and square that off again, uh, square with the original line I created. So essentially, we're getting rid of this, we're getting rid of this, and we're keeping this part and using that in our mold. First thing we're gonna do with any silicone mold Spray it with our appropriate mold release. Again, a non-silicone based spray. Do this outside or put your PPE on. While that release spray is drying, drying we're gonna just quickly clean up uh, some of the wood here because we do have uh, some voids um, and some like rot and stuff. Uh, and then this part, which is like not, not, not bark, but it's a, it's a rough surface, kind of loose. So we do need to get some of that off. We're gonna use our, uh, you can use our Dremel, we can use our um, grinder, we can use our sander, just to just rough that up to make sure that the epoxy has enough uh, to grip to. We've sanded our wood, all the, the live edge component to get all the excess bark off. Uh, so, and to rough it up to make sure that we have no loose pieces there. We've gotten rid of a lot of this dead stuff and a lot of the softer sap wood and stuff that's been in there. So we now we have a pretty structurally safe um, piece of wood. We've already sprayed our mold release. So we're just gonna go ahead and place that in there. You can see that's a really nice fit. We need to measure the resin. Knowing that this is a 16 inch mold, we have obviously 16 inch, an average of three inch, 16 times three. So that's 48 cubic inches there. And then this one's a little bit tougher. We've got four by, call it four by four. So we'll call it another 16 cubic inches, 64 cubic inches total. And we're gonna divide that by 1.8. Uh, I'm gonna just roughly say two because we have a little bit of air in there. Um, and we're gonna end up with 32 ounces. So I'm gonna make a little bit more than 32 ounces just to make sure you have enough resin. I'm going to use Total Boat's um, Thick Set because it is good for one inch pours. It's gonna be good for this volume. And we're gonna pick a super funky color from our black diamond pigment line to go with that. I'm gonna come and put a piece of wood under here because I want to move this project after we poured it so I can use the workbench to make our next project. 
Um, otherwise, that's the only reason for the wood there. Got an appropriately sized mixing container because we need 32 ounces. So you don't want a ginormous container. And you don't want anything too small. You want something you're gonna be able to accurately measure this stuff in. This stuff, uh, three to one ratio. So three to one, we've got four parts total. We've got 32 ounces we need. 32 divided by four is eight. So we're gonna have eight parts, or rather <laughs> eight ounces of the hardener, the part B, and uh, 24 ounces of the, uh, of the main component. We're gonna grab our fun box of black diamond pigments. Black diamond is a supplier of mica based and synthet synthetic mica pigments. I wanna do something like off the wall, okay? Like really crazy, we're gonna choose vivid orange. Yeah, maybe it might not look good, doesn't really matter. The whole point of this video is to show you how all this stuff works, but I think it'll actually look kind of cool. The brown and that orange really popping. Um, I'm going to uh, not measure this. I'm gonna just put a tad bit in to the, till it gets to the point of clarity that I want it. In general, one eighth to one quarter teaspoon per liter of resin is typically what you would need, but if you wanna have clear resin, you don't need as much. If you wanna have really, really dense, dark of uh, colors um, that's not see-through at all, then you need more. So using the pigments is obviously kind of a, a personal preference, kind of a trial and error thing. We've mixed up our vivid orange pigment with our Total Boat Thick Set Resin. We're getting ready to pour this. And we'll also want to get our weight to put on there after to keep this wood down so it doesn't float up with the resin. It's a pretty darn good estimate of material use. We're almost at the top there. Obviously the wood is thicker than the mold, so that's why it's sticking up, but the resin's almost at the top of the mold. Okay, we're gonna apply our hand weight there and we're gonna move this out of the way while we let it set for the day. I'm kind of excited to finish this one. Next to no effort, right? It's right out of there. We use that again. And there is our beautiful board. So we're gonna go ahead and run that through the planer level it out and we can continue finishing it. Now that that piece has come out of the planer, nice and level, we've got that resin uh, between the wood there, mostly because when I cut that wood, I really just kind of cut it with the, uh, the bandsaw and it wasn't perfectly straight. So basically once you fill it with resin, the mold's gonna make it straight. So that's a nice straight edge. We're gonna use this edge on our table saw and we're gonna take roughly half an inch off. Um, this side's fine, we don't have to take anything off there. And we'll trim this side and this side as well. Right, we cleaned up the edge there. We took that off, which has resin and wood. We don't need that anymore. So we've got a nice straight board. Um, we could technically just go through the router table and stand this up, but I wanna get a little bit more creative. We're gonna use one of our router templates. This is our uh, round grip template and original name, round grip, okay? So we're gonna line that up and we're gonna first trace um, the design and rough cut it. Um, these templates are pretty cool because they have a lines. So if you didn't have a perfect, this is pretty close to the width of the template, but if you didn't have the same width, you could use a center line and then center it with your board. So you don't have to fool around with measuring. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and trace this out. So we're gonna cut all this off and we're gonna cut some of that off and then we'll finish it up with the router table to do the actual final forming. Well, really, as we talked about in our router template video on shaping, we wanna get a rough cut. We wanna leave a uh, 16th to a quarter of an inch around those lines because we're going to end up using the router table and the template to actually make that a perfect cut and a perfect shape. So 
so now that we've rough cut um, our shape onto our piece of material, we have to adhere the template to the wood to go through our router table. I do cover this in the router, uh, router uh, templates and shaping part of this video series. But if you're just watching this video and you haven't been familiar with router templates, you can buy these router templates at craftelements.com. We have a ton of different designs, like a hundred plus different variations of these. Um, and we're gonna attach it with either hot glue, two-sided tape, or the CA glue and, and masking tape method. I'm not gonna go over all those, but two-sided tape is pretty obvious, right? A little bit there, stick it down. Uh, in this case, it's very similar. You're putting tape on this side, tape here, and then you're putting CA glue or super glue on the tape and then uh, fixing it down, letting it set. Uh, I usually almost always use the hot glue method. Um, as long as you get it down quick enough and get it flat enough, it's perfectly fine. You just need to make sure you use enough of it to keep it in place because the last thing you want is this thing uh, coming off your wood and flying away <laughs> while you're running through the router table. So if you use enough of it and you take it off right away, it's really fine. It's the quickest way uh, I found to use these templates with these pieces. So I'm gonna let that heat up. Good. We'll go over to our router table and install our flush trim bit. So I have here our quarter inch um, flush trim bit and it's roughly an inch and a quarter of blade, which is gonna be fine because you have roughly three quarter inches uh, of material there. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that in my router table. Then I'm gonna adjust the height so the bearing on the top of that um, router bit is riding on the template and then the blade is gonna be attached or line up with the wood rather. Now I'm gonna just pry this off. Comes off really quickly and it's pretty clean. All you need to do is then just get the rest of that uh, hot glue off your board. Remember, you're sanding this anyway, so if you've got a little bit of residue left over, it's not a big deal. You do wanna get most of it off because we're gonna now run this through the router table again, but this time we're going to um, put a, a quarter round on it, basically uh, a quarter inch round over around the entire perimeter. In case you're watching this and have no idea what I'm talking about, this is a quarter inch round over bit, and we're just gonna bring it up so the uh, start of the blade is basically level with our board and level with the table, right? So what's gonna happen is once that spins, it's gonna cut around chamfer all around the entire perimeter that we run through this and that uh, bearing is what's gonna is what's gonna guide it around right probably goes without saying, but that's kind of the beauty of these, these router templates. It takes kind of the guesswork and kind of reduces the risk of mistakes when you're shaping. You know, you couldn't have cut that by hand, that perfect circle by hand and all this by hand with a jigsaw. I mean, I, I certainly can't do it, right? So uh, using these templates, whether it's a full security board template or just a handle template like this, can really obviously up your game when it comes to shaping. So anyway, this has been planed been routered, we've shaped it. The last thing to do is just sand this entire thing up. We're gonna go to 320 and then we're gonna hit that, that with a natural oil finish and that will be done. So I'm gonna start with 80 grit. I'm gonna go to 120 or 180, depending on what I have. And then we'll move to 220, 320 and then we'll be done. So since the sanding part is a really boring, tedious part, 
we're gonna go in a time lapse, fast forward, play some funky music, and then we'll uh, we'll get to the fun oiling part after that. We're gonna grab our Howard cutting board oil and just finish this guy off. It's a food safe mineral oil. You can see just instantly how that makes uh, the resin and wood just incredibly glossy and shiny. Flip it around and do the other side. And the trick is with this stuff, you just want to leave it to absorb into the wood for 20 to 30 minutes. So we're going to leave it here on the table. And come back and wipe that all off. I really like how this one turned out. Use a lot of walnut here I'm up in Canada, so we have quite a bit of black walnut available. Um, but that just really looks really slick with that orange, uh, orange fire color. So really the key is here, we're just... Uh, rubbing this down and getting all the excess oil off the wooden resin. Uh, you don't want to let it sit there because if you do, if you let it sit there for a couple, few hours or even overnight, it'll be really hard to remove as it dries out and gets flaky. So you want to just make sure you get everything off within typically 20 or 30 minutes. And this board is officially done ready for use or sale. For our next project, we're gonna get out our preformed fishtail uh, security board mold. And we're gonna kind of do something a little bit different. We're gonna do kind of a, a cross vertical here. And we're gonna use our templates to match this mold uh, to pre-cut the wood so the wood fits exactly in this mold. And that's a really one of the cool things about these molds is that we do have matching templates for them. So it's super easy to kind of uh, cut the wood to fit the mold exactly and then to pour the resin in the middle. I've got a piece of uh, roughly one inch uh, Manitoba maple. It's already pre-cracked in half. So we're gonna get the rest of that. And we're essentially laying it out like this. We're gonna have our handle cut there. And we're going to have the bottom kind of like that. On this template, I just grabbed it at inventory, so it still has the um, protective paper on them. But these templates are, of course, uh, a clear acrylic, so you can't actually see through them. But for the sake of this video, uh, I think it's probably easier to see this with the paper on rather than a clear acrylic. And I'm just going to trace out the parts of the wood that we need. We're going to cut that stuff and rough cut it, router it out, and then drop it in our mold. Now remember with these templates, the entire point is to rough cut that piece. We're using the template and the router table along with the flush trim router bit to get that perfect exact cut. That's really where the power of these templates come in. I certainly could have tried to uh, cut this perfectly with my uh, bandsaw or even a jigsaw, but I'm gonna be honest, it would be so hard to get that just perfect and just right that this is the only way to get it fitting those molds uh, as best as possible. We're gonna just hold this down with some hot glue, which you could obviously use two-sided tape or the CA glue uh, and tape method. I got the top here done. Go we'll ahead to the bottom. Coming over to the router table to switch out the router bit. It's got a quarter inch round over bit in there right now and I want to put our flush trim bit with a top bearing in there. It's gonna work with our router template.
need to adjust the bearing and the blade to make sure that bearing rides on the template and the blade is going to cut our wood. All right, so not a big deal. Our router bit took a piece of that wood off. Um, it was either a weakness in the wood or we hit the router bit the wrong way. It is what it is. This stuff happens. That's the, the thing that, you know, I like to make in these videos is that, you know, always acknowledge your mistakes and problems that occur. This is never perfect, especially when you're dealing with natural materials like wood, uh, things like that happen. So what I've done is I've just cut off the piece here and here that came off uh, prematurely. Uh, while routering it out and I'm going to backfill it with resin. I could of course, you know, do this again, get another piece of this and recut that. But for the purpose of my um, demonstration, this is gonna work and it's gonna look just fine. You're gonna have a little bit of resin here and a little bit of resin there. It's gonna look like it, it was intentional. So we're gonna go ahead and just use that piece and bring our mold over. Got the rest of this bark, we're gonna just peel off. Sometimes the bark will come off nice depending on the species. This is Manitoba maple, so it comes off really, really easy. It's like a maple is typically a hardwood, but Manitoba maple's softer. Um, and that bark comes off pretty easily. If it was something like honey locust or like a hard exotic wood, we might be um, struggling to get the bark off with this. But that's a pretty good job. We'll just sand up the rest to get the rest of it off. Place our wood in the mold, and we've already sprayed this mold with our mold release. I just didn't, I did it off video, but it's definitely sprayed with our mold release. So you can see that's where our kind of unintentional gap came from, but it's cool. We're gonna fill that with resin. Otherwise, using the template, you can see making that wood fit really, really nice. We are going to measure out uh, seven and a half, call it eight inches uh, by 10 inches. So we have 80 um, and then we've got, this is a one and a half inch mold, but our wood is only about one inch. So it's 80 times one, which is of course just 80. And we're gonna divide that by 1.8, which is 44. We're gonna add 10% by multiplying by 1.1 to give us the overage. We basically get 48 ounces, which is sweet because with our total boat um, thick set, we need four parts and 48 divided by four is 12. I put my PPE on. And we're gonna mix this up. I'm using a container that I just used for our other project. It's got a little bit of resin and pigment in there. Not a big deal because I am going to add some more pigment that's gonna be dark anyway. So we can re reuse this and that color is not really gonna make a difference. For this project, I've got some dark, deep blue. I don't know the actual color, but it is a uh, black diamond pigment that I had transferred to a little vial here. It's a nice light wood, obviously, so using a, a nice dark blue pigment is gonna give us some nice contrast. Make sure we do a thorough mix, two to three minutes, initially to get the resin mixed before we add the pigment, of course. And it is a visual thing. You want to make sure you have pretty clear resin. And I mean by clear as in not like murky, not whitish. You want clear. The bubbles are okay. They're going to come out. But you want clear as in uh, well mixed and consistent. And then you're going to go around the edges like this and the bottom to make sure you get all your resin and your pigment combined. Because you don't want a patch of pigment and you don't want a patch of unset resin. Because that will really make a... I'll mess up and it'll really mess up your project. I've got our HDPE blocks and our weights, which are going to help us distribute the weight of our hand weight across that wood. We're going to take our epoxy and drop her in. 
We've got that super deep, vibrant blue, and we're going to get our little area over here and at the top of the handle to make sure we got that all covered. And remember, it doesn't matter if you spill any of the resin out here because we are going to run this through the planer after uh, once we demold it. All right. And it's, again, over, okay to overfill. Same reason. We're going to run that through the planer um, and it's going to take that all down anyway. So it's not a big deal. And that's how we're going to hold our wood down in these molds. So you've got that super deep blue. That's going to set overnight. It's time to demold our next project. This is the fishtail security board that we did. And I've already taken the cross member off. And we've got these HDP blocks sitting there to uh, hold down the wood. And we over poured the resin. So they're kind of stuck in the resin now. Not a big deal. Just grab your hammer or mallet and just knock them from the side. And then we're going to go ahead and demold this bad boy. Really, really easy. Super clean mold. It's kind of funny. You would think that the resin would get under there with the mold, but it, it's not. With, the, with those silicone molds, the fit is so tight that none of the resin escaped under there to fill that void. So that's coming out of the planer. We've planed both sides. We've obviously got this big divot in there, which you could, if this is the backside, I don't know if it really matters, but you could obviously fill that with resin, uh, let it sit overnight, and then sand just that part down. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna run the perimeter through the uh, router table and put a, a quarter round, basically, uh, on it, quarter inch round over on it. And then whatever resin is left on the edges between the resin that got between the mold and the wood, we'll sand out with our power sander or oscillating sander. So I made the decision in the last couple of minutes that I'm going to take the lazy way out and I'm going to trim this board here to get rid of this void altogether. I want to get this video done today and having this trimmed here uh, just goes to show you that you can always adapt your project and it's my project so I'm going to do it anyway. But in, in reality uh, I definitely could fill this with resin, let it sit overnight, sand it and then continue on but I do want to get this board done in the next half hour, an hour before I leave and the easiest way to do that is to chop this end off. So I'm just going to go and determine what is square and run this over to the miter saw and take that end off. All right, that solved my problem. I don't have to worry about that large void in the wood anymore and I can continue to sand this. So I'm going to go ahead and start at um, 80 grit, go to 120, go to 220, and then I'll go up to 320. I'm not going to go any past 320 on this because I'm going to use that natural oil finish again. And really anything past 220 you start to close up that wood grain as you probably remember from watching our finishes video. Um, so I'm not going to go past 320 but I'm going to fast forward through this, play some music in the background. So we're going to get from this to 320 and then we'll finish it up. This board's been sanded to 320, and I'm going to use Howard Cutting Board Oil. This is a food safe uh, mineral oil, and it is just from Amazon. Um, 
I honestly like the Total Boat Wood Honey better. I think it provides a better finish, a thicker, richer feeling finish, but nothing beats the Instagram worthiness of this stuff. You know, when you see that nice clear oil make that resin pop, that's what people kind of stop and, and uh, stop scrolling for. There you go, look at that. Look how cool that looks. So that's the, only reason, that's the reason I like this for videos, but I personally think the, the Total Boat Wood Honey, which is a, a hybrid mix of mineral oil and beeswax and some other stuff, probably provides a nicer end finish. I just want to acknowledge the couple of mistakes in this particular piece. Well, not necessarily mistakes, but you know, we ran into the problem cutting off uh, when we ran this, when we shaped that piece with a router. We ended up hitting the end of this piece of wood. We lost that, we had to fill it. And then obviously I had to trim off the entire bottom of this board uh, because I didn't really pay much attention when I put that piece in the mold, seeing that big void there. And I, for whatever reason, just didn't think much of it. So what am I getting at? I don't know what I'm getting at, but the fact is, you know, there was a few mistakes, uh, little issues, but look how it came out, right? I mean, we filled both pieces in, it looks like it was intentional. Does not look like the bottom of the board was chopped off. So despite those kind of problems that I ran into, uh, mostly due to my, you know, laziness in picking a nice piece of wood, to be honest with you, um, we still ended up with a really beautiful piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that sit for 20 or, or so minutes. And uh, then I'll come back and I'll wipe the rest of the excess oil off and it will officially be done. Okay, so I've got our template to match this guy, you can see. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna effectively cut a, a handle of, of walnut and pre-fit that in there. We're gonna get rid of this, we're gonna get rid of this, and we're gonna take that handle part. I'm gonna come back, we're gonna glue down the template to the wood. And again, these templates are um, clear acrylic. I'm just not taking the protective paper off this guy. Use our flush trim router bit with the router template attached to just round all this off and make it perfect so it'll perfectly fit in the mold. Got our handle, I'm gonna pry that guy off. Take the rest of that wood off, or take the rest of the glue off. We'll test fit it to the mold here. And yeah, it's a pretty darn good fit. We're gonna go ahead and spray our mold release. We do have a bunch of mold releases we recommend. This is just one of them. Uh, it's a smooth on universal uh, mold release. There's also like the MAN 200 ease release, smooth on ease release. Um, they all kind of work the same. The key is that you want to have a non silicone based release for these silicone molds. And for this project, we are using Maker Epoxy uh, by Total Boat and Just Crow, very similar to the tabletop resin that Total Boat has. So you have to remember when you're looking at this mold, that the top here is actually gonna be the bottom, whereas the bottom of this mold actually be the top. With some of our other molds that don't have these specific insets, it doesn't matter the top, bottom, whatever you choose is, is fine. But with this mold, you know, we're working backwards. Whatever we lay first is gonna be on top. So we're actually gonna take our live edge, instead of going this way, we're gonna go this way, and we're gonna fill it 
uh, rather not fill it, but put a nice layer of clear resin down. And using the Total Boat Maker Epoxy, because it does set up really quickly, it's very, very thick, and we're gonna allow you, and it's gonna allow us to do some ocean waves and stuff like that when we get to the next step. Now, Maker Epoxy is a one-to-one -one ratio product, so we're just gonna go ahead and mix up roughly 20 ounces. It, 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 again, it doesn't matter because we are only doing a thin uh, layer of this, and Maker Epoxy is good for typically up to a quarter of an inch. So because it is a one-to-one, -one, we're doing roughly, uh, what we're doing exactly, uh, as close as possible, 10 and 10. So I've got our clear resin all mixed up. I'm gonna create a nice base layer there. I don't need to worry about weighing down the wood this time because it's such a small amount of resin and such a small piece of wood that we're just gonna let it set. So we've got our clear layer down, roughly a quarter inch of the Maker Epoxy. And now we're going to add our waves. So for our waves, I didn't cover this in the video series. It is more like a resin art specific type topic. Uh, there's a lot of YouTube videos, by the way, uh, including some here on our YouTube channel about making uh, resin uh, ocean waves and resin art. Um, but what I'm gonna use instead of a typical mica or mica synthetic, like a pearl pigment, instead of a, a powdered pearl pigment, we're using a liquid. Uh, I think these are alcohol-based pigments. This one is uh, aluminite white, and it basically creates a super white paint-like um, consistent, not consistency, but uh, clarity. So I've already mixed some into a tiny little jar, uh, taken some of the Maker Epoxy in a small amount. I've mixed some white into there and it is white like paint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that and just run a couple of small lines um, through here to create our waves. I'm gonna use a toothpick or a, um, a stir stick to kind of start the waves and I'm gonna use my heat gun to kind of blow out the waves. I'm certainly not a resin artist. This is not my forte. Um, so I'm gonna do the best I can. We're kind of going for a look here. It's all part of the process, right? So just bear with me as I do this. Clearly not the nice example of uh, lacing resin waves for ocean art, but it's gonna do. Um, it serves our purpose. We're gonna let that set overnight and uh, it is maker epoxy, so it sets in 12 to 24 hours. We'll come back and we'll do a top coat on that to fill it up of uh, like a sea blue and that'll complete our resin and wood ocean themed flight board. It's the next day and the first layer of our ocean themed flight paddle board um, is not quite set yet. It is still, you can see it's a little bit, little bit of flex in that mold, it's fine. So it would be fine, it would be a good time now to do that second layer. Um, I could probably rough this up a bit. I'm going to just a little bit with some uh, hand sanding because we want to make sure that there's a good bond between the first layer and the second layer. But because I've only got about three eight. Uh, three eighths of an inch, uh, not quite half an inch of height here to fill. I'm going to go ahead again and use uh, Maker Epoxy. Um, as you know from watching our earlier videos and the Epoxy Resin Wood Basics 
series with the epoxy module, this is really good for a quarter inch, up to a quarter inch, but really in larger volumes. In a small volume like this, three eighths, not a problem. So I'm gonna use this and that's gonna allow us to get that product done faster. It's gonna set fine and uh, we're gonna mix them up. I've got two containers out here because I wanna mix a darker blue and a lighter blue. Thinking like, this is the beach, uh, lighter blue for the uh, shallower water, darker blue for the deeper water, if that's the idea. Um, and typically with the Maker Epoxy, because it's such a thick material, it does stay together. Um, it doesn't color bleed a lot because it is so thick, unlike the um, uh, other project that we may have done in this series, where we would choose the Thick Set Fathom, very, very water thin. It's gonna kind of mix and kind of go all over the place. These colors will generally stay separated because it is such a thick epoxy. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that up. And remember, we have a one-to-one -one ratio on this guy. Um, so I'm gonna measure this out, mix it up into two different containers, and then we'll add our dual blue pigments. Just gonna scuff up that surface, We're trying to stay away from the edges of the mold. We don't wanna sand the silicone and rip it. It's not gonna rip, but it'll, it could possibly damage it if it was a coarse sandpaper. Doesn't have to be perfect. Again, this stuff is not fully, fully cured anyway, but uh, we do want to have a little bit of a, a rougher surface for this uh, next layer to adhere to. All right, I'm going to get our black diamond pigments and I'm going to just do, I want, I want this board to be somewhat clear. So I'm just going to do a tiny little bit um, of pigment in each, um, in each one. We've still got some translucency there, which is kind of what I'm going for. I don't want deep, uh, deep, completely opaque color. I want this board to be a little bit see-through. Kind of like water. I'm gonna do the deeper blue one now. Probably gonna add some darker blue here. Doing lighter, closer to the beach area and darker here. To make this a little bit more natural, I'm just going to kind of blend it a little bit because with this thick resin, it's not necessarily going to blend itself. It's, that's the good thing about this art resin is that it's made for this purpose to not just get all wacky and color mixed when you pour it. Okay, we're going to let this set uh, 12, 24 hours. We'll come back and it will be ready to demold and we can plane it down, get rid of the rest of the height on that. Uh, on the handle and we'll be good to go. It's the next day and this pour is fully set. It's not fully cured, but it's set enough that we can demold it and start to finish this piece. You can see the transparency there already, which is what I was going for. And then the cool thing about these silicone molds is just they peel right off and get that, that suction sound. Wow. Pretty cool. So to finish this, we're gonna uh, run this side through the planer. This side's okay, this is kind of what we want. We'll, we might have to do a little bit of a quick sand with like a high grit on top of that. But this we're gonna plane, sand, and then we'll just finish that entire thing up. thing we're going to do is run this through the router table and get an edge on it. Now there was a void in that piece of wood that I should have uh, probably inspected before 
I put it in our mold, so basically you can see that entire, um, I don't wanna say rotted area, but that area that's really, really rough there. Uh, it just got caught by the planer and just took the excess piece off. So there's obviously some sort of a, a crack or a seam there. Um, not a big deal. We're gonna sand this out and uh, round it out and we'll still have a, a really nice board on that side. Now where I would normally start with uh, 80 or 120 grit, I'm actually gonna start with 180 grit because all I have here is a, the planer marks in the back and I don't really wanna rough up this too much. Okay, so, so brought this entire thing, uh, other than the wood part, uh, up to 800 grit. Uh, after I did the original 800 grit sand, I put some water on it, and then I went over with the 800 grit again, uh, essentially wet sanding this thing just to make it extra smooth. I could get more clarity out of this. As you can see, uh, you may be able to see, this part in the top, uh, rather in the recessed parts, that's like the original resin. We didn't, we didn't sand that at all, so it's perfectly clear. But we've got a little bit of a matte finish on the top because we did sand that with 800. But once I add the oil um, to this entire thing, uh, I'm guaranteeing that it will get a lot more clear and a little, a little bit more concise. So we're going to go ahead and oil that up and our project will be done. And I'm going to use our Total Boat uh, Wood Honey, which is a food safe finish. Wouldn't necessarily have to use that finish on this board. I could certainly, you know, uh, spray it or lacquer it or, or varnish it because it's not going to be in contact with food. There's just going to be for glasses. But this is a really easy to finish to use. I'm going to use my super small glove because I ran out of large ones and Amazon hasn't delivered my new ones yet. So I've got extra small ones that my daughter wears. So forgive the ridiculous looking gloves. You don't really need much of this stuff. And it doesn't really absorb into the resin, but it will penetrate that top layer where we sanded, where there's going to be like microscopic voids, essentially. It's really going to just, it's going to really penetrate the wood, but it's more or less just going to create a kind of a film on the resin. So we're going to let this sit here for roughly 20 minutes, half an hour, and we'll come back and wipe all the extra oil off that wasn't absorbed into the wood. Enough time has passed that any finish that's left here should have been uh, absorbed. So I'm just going to really just buff it all off and get rid of the excess, especially around the resin where it, I'm going to have to do this a couple of times, right? Because especially with that resin where it's not absorbing the oil, you might just sit, it's going to have a little top layer of oil. You're going to probably have to wipe it a few times just to get rid of any sort of residue that's left on there. But the wood looks amazing with this oil finish. Can you see me through there a little bit? <laughs> that is a completed project. Our wood and resin four place uh, beer slash wine flight board. All right, for our final project where we're doing the small tabletop in a Star Wars theme, we're gonna do something a little different. Um, because I'm going to use this piece of walnut. However, you'll see this part 
was cut from a very narrow part of the top of the tree. So you've got a ton of sapwood in there. You've got a ton of the bark. However, in this case, because I am doing a Star Wars table, because this looks so interplanetary-like, and because I'm completely encasing this piece, sides, top, si the whole side, both sides and the top in resin, I'm only going to do some basic cleanup of this to get rid of some of the loose pieces and the debris. I'm mostly going to leave this funkiness intact because I'm covering the entire thing in resin and I'm not taking the resin off the top. So essentially all that resin on the top and bottom is going to keep all this bark and everything together because we do have contact area here, we have contact area all here with the actual wood. It's just you are getting some weakness here where you've got a lot of that soft sap wood and the resin, uh, sorry, and the bark, but that's okay again because we are leaving a full thick layer of resin to keep everything together. Otherwise, if you were doing a tabletop or a board and you were going to surface this and not have, you know, a thick layer of resin on the top and encasing the entire thing, you would definitely want to get rid of this bark in advance. So because our mold is 36 and a half, I am going to measure out roughly, um, I'm going to get rid of the piece at the bottom here and then I'm going to measure out 36 uh, and a half inches. What I'm going to do just to make sure we get good contact when the resin comes to the edges, I'm going to get rid of a lot of the wood, uh, a lot of these uh, soft wood on the edge of the, the, the board here. So what we've done is we've cleaned up the ends of this piece because when we want, when we're going to cover up with, with resin, we're going to obviously trim off the ends. We don't want to have this wood exposed because this is super soft bark, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so we want to make sure that where we're actually going to trim this out and make our final table, that all this soft wood and stuff that you normally would take off is completely covered in resin and is not exposed uh, outside of the resin. Got our trimmed up, sort of cleaned up piece. We're gonna drop that in our mold. Now this mold is HDPE, as we've mentioned uh, in the mold video in this series, which is a little bit different than our silicone molds. They're imperfect, so you're gonna need to do some trimming and planing. Uh, in this case, we're gonna probably plane the bottom, trim the sides, but we're leaving the top because we are gonna coat that uh, with some tall resin. One, to encase this wood, as I had mentioned multiple times, because we're leaving the bark and everything on, we want it fully encased in resin, so it's structurally stable. And two, to make sure that our uh, little uh, model is going to, because it's sitting higher than the wood, it's gonna need some extra resin in there to, to compensate for that. All right, so we're gonna measure this out and calculate how much resin we need. Now, we're only going to do a small layer of like a starry night gray type, uh, colored rather, uh, resin because we want to get a base layer of probably half an inch first and then the rest is going to be clear. The rest uh, going up the sides and the top is going to be completely clear resin. So we're going to do the base layer in total boat thick set, which again is good for up to one inch, and we're going to do the rest of it in total boat uh, thick set fathom. All right, let's get started. So this one's going to be pretty hard to measure because it is so very funky. Um, but because we are not filling it up all the way anyway, it doesn't really matter. We're just going to get a general base layer. We got four inches, five inches, three inches. We're going to say four inches and we have our 36 and a half inch mold. So roughly 73 total long uh, by four. And we want to get like a half inch pour. So to get roughly half an inch in here, uh, we're going to need uh, approximately uh, 82 ounces of resin, give or take, because we are only doing that base layer. It's not that important how accurate we are. We're going to give this in a stir. 
again stirring until the resin and harder the resin and hardener are fully mixed and we don't have a murky white fluid anymore but we have a basically clear fluid typically it's two to three minutes and in this stuff because it is a pretty thin material you could definitely mix it with a power mixing head but i'm just going to go ahead and do it with my stir stick now because we are leaving all this soft uh, very porous, uh, somewhat brittle material in place. I'm going to just do a quick over pour of clear resin to get some in, into some of these crevices. That's going to seal up that wood. So when we actually do our full clear pour, it's not going to be so bubbly because you're going to have a lot of air coming out. Uh, in this case, because we are leaving all that material on, uh, there's a lot of places for air to get stuck and bubbles and, and stuff to get stuck. So I'm going to do a quick over pour. Now I'm going to take the rest of this and I'm going to put our, our, our pigment in, which is going to be a, uh, a starry kind of galaxy from far, far away themed pigment, like a dark gray black, kind of a gunmetal color pigment. And we're going to use a fair amount of it. We have a high volume, but we're also, uh, we also don't want it to be clear at all. We want a nice dense, um, you know, void of voids of space type look to it. Right. So you've got this nice, gunmetal, kind of a dark, dark, dark gray, almost black look to it. And we're just going to go ahead and pour this along the sides of our wood that we just did a quick uh, clear pour on to seal up some of those edges. And uh, we'll mix the gray and clear with our stick after we've poured it, just so we don't have any clear along the bottom. Should be enough to hold that piece down. And then we're going to torch this really quickly to get rid of those bubbles. All right, it is the next day and uh, roughly 18 hours have passed since we poured this resin and it is not set yet. It is a little bit pliable, but it's not tacky either. Um, if you recall in the epoxy video that we did in this series, when you're doing multi-layer pours, you definitely don't want to let it fully set and then pour again. You either want to do it while it's still tacky or not quite set yet. Uh, in this case, it's okay. Or if it has been set and it's nice and hard, you want to give that a, a rough sand. Uh, with some sandpaper because you want that next layer of resin to bond. So that's really, really important. Right now we don't have to do it because this isn't fully set yet. It's still uh, relatively pliable. I can push things into it, a fingernail, etc. Um, but what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to actually super glue or CA glue our uh, TIE fighter as well as our, I cut some uh, Imperial Galactic Republic uh, logo is basically the bad guys in, in Star Wars. If you're not a Star Wars fan, I've cut the Galactic uh, Republic logo, sprayed it in red and put it in a clear coat. I'm going to put that at the opposite side of the table. So I'm going to lay those out now. I'm going to glue them down. And then after they're fully glued and set, uh, we can pour the rest of our resin. So now that our resin is partially set there, we don't need that weight anymore. So I can take that right off. This is not going to float anymore, even if we put our top layer of resin on. And I, I, the idea is I want to offset these. So I'm going to put the, uh, the TIE Fighter on this side. And then I'm going to put the little uh, Galactic Republic logo on this side. And if this resin was, um, you know, less set, I mean, it isn't set, as I said, but if it was really tacky, we could probably just get away with pushing these in and letting it set a little bit more. But I don't want to risk these floating up. So I'm going to use uh, some super glue and I'm going to use the glue on the bottom of the surface of these, of these parts and push it into the resin and let that dry before I pour the resin. Because the last thing I want 
is that uh, next layer of resin making these things float up. Um, regarding using hot glue, I wouldn't use hot glue because once I put that next layer of resin on, that, as you know, resin heats up, right? So I've actually tried hot glue in the past with a, a similar product I did, and the hot glue ended up just getting heated up and detached from the resin, and then the part floated up anyway. So that's why I'm using uh, super glue in this case. So I'm gonna give that about 10 minutes um, for the super glue to fully cure there. Uh, so that's not gonna come off, and then we'll go and we'll mix up the rest of our resin. So I've calculated this out that we're gonna need 485 ounces approximately of resin. That's accounting for these larger side rivers, um, as well as the height of clear resin that we're gonna to need to come above the wood and uh, fill to the top of the TIE fighter or and a, little bit, a little bit more than the TIE fighter. Uh, remember that we are basically making a solid resin table in this case, we're encasing the wood in that, right? Which is again, why we can get away with having the bark and stuff uh, still left on. We're encasing the entire thing uh, in solid resin. So uh, for this pour, because it is a larger volume and a larger depth, we're going to use Total Boat's Thick Set Fathom product. So this is the product, if you recall from watching our video series, uh, that is good for two inch, uh, possibly up to three inch to pours depending on the volume. So this is gonna be perfect for that. My only concern is that 485 um, ounces works out to like 14.2 liters. Um, I've, got a, I've got a bucket that I can mix, um, I'm going to do seven and seven liters in this bucket total. So two different mixes, two different pours of the clear material. But I basically have, I'm down to the barrel of my uh, Thick Set Fathom product. So this is going to use all the Thick Set Fathom that I hear and have here in the shop. But that's okay because this is going to turn out awesome and I know you guys are going to love it. So I'm going to go ahead and start mixing that stuff. We're going to place the music in the background because the mixing part is boring and we'll pour it in, okay? All right, so I didn't quite get 14 liters in there. I simply ran out, I didn't have enough material, but it's still good because as long as we cover that uh, TIE fighter, that's all we really care about and it's covered. So yeah, I mixed a little less than 14 liters, but still got that entire project finished. I'll have to get some more um, Total Boat Fix at Fathom. You'll notice there's a lot of bubbles in there from mixing, that's fine. Over the next few hours to up to a day, uh, those are gonna come to the surface and we can just knock them down with a torch or a heat gun. So we're gonna let this set. It's gonna take roughly four days to set before we can demold it. We'll come back and we'll see what it looks like. Just about to leave for the day and I wanted to get a quick video of this. You can see all those micro bubbles are completely gone and we have a near, a near crystal clear finish. We've still got some bubbles coming out from the wood that just wasn't sealed, which is fine. Uh, we're gonna probably knock those down uh, tomorrow. And if not, we're gonna top coat this thing with resin anyway, so it'll be fine. Um, but yeah, you can see all those micro, micro bubbles of that Thick Set Fathom product have just come right out. We're back uh, after about four or five days uh, letting our resin for the Star Wars table build set. And I want to tell you a quick story about this idiot named Sean. <laughs> Essentially, what happened is uh, we have 3D printers up on our loft, on our second floor here in the, in the shop. And it was really dusty up there and I was about to print something. So I decided, you know what? I'm gonna blow all the dust off the 3D printers and get all the stuff off the table and the floor. Not a big deal. It's gonna land on the floor here and I'm gonna clean it up from there. Not thinking that there was a one day old set resin table on my workbench, all right? Can't see it from here, but there is a nice top layer of dust and debris embedded into my otherwise clear uh, Total Boat Thick Set Fathom resin. So yeah, I was kind of PO'd about that. However, that's part of the game, right? <laughs> Nothing's perfect, especially in making. This is yet another mistake I have wonderfully made on camera to share with you, but it's fine. 
The original intent with this table was to not having to level the top side. I really didn't want to run that through the slab leveler or our CNC machine. My plan was to just do a quick sand, finish the, uh, trim the edges, and then top coat the entire thing. I think I'll be able to get a lot of the initial dust and stuff off the top layer of the resin, but there are some heavier particles that have actually seeped into the resin that could be down a quarter of an inch. I'm not gonna take that much off of it. It is what it is, whatever. It's gonna look cool anyway. If you've got fresh resin, put some sort of dome or plastic or something over it, especially if you're gonna be still working in your shop or if you're on your second level blowing off dust everywhere. That would be a great thing to do. <laughs> Either way, we're gonna get started now. I'm gonna take this out of the mold and remember, this is one of our HDPE molds, not our silicone molds. So um, we're just going to go ahead and loosen up the edges here with a, a mallet. You don't have to beat the snot out of it. They are uh, fairly thin. It's a fairly thin plastic uh, design. So you just want to flex them enough to get that kind of like cracking noise, not an actual crack, but a, the disconnection between the resin and the, uh, and the mold. So we're going to go ahead and flip this bad boy over. And it's a lot. It weighs a bit because it's quite a bit of resin. All right. So, there we go. That's a thick piece of resin and wood. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, trim this up. So the easiest way to start trimming this, because it was in that mold, and those molds are imperfect, you've got kind of a small curvature on the edges. We're just gonna choose one point of reference, one side, or, and it is, I think it's 18 and a half, that mold. Uh, yeah, 18 and a half. So we're gonna take off for a few quarters of an inch. So we're gonna go and set our saw blade at 17.75 to the edge of the blade to take off uh, roughly that uh, half inch to three quarter inch there. And we'll take a little bit less, quite a bit less off on the other side. Now we have a perfectly flat side to work with. I'm gonna move the fence, our guide, to the other side. And basically what we're doing here is we just wanna cut off enough on both of the sides uh, to get rid of that bevel at the bottom and make it straight. So we could take off a quarter inch, at most half an inch. And we're going to use the longer side of the table to support the weight of the table instead of using this side where we have the force and the weight of the table going this way. We'll use the longer side, it'll stabilize that piece more. And of course, this is a small table we're doing with the table saw. Uh, I have a track saw that goes together too. So if you were doing a larger piece that you couldn't just run through a table easily, uh, this is part of a track saw. There's another section that makes it even longer. And then there is, uh, we did talk about it in our tools video, uh, but essentially it's a um, circular saw that sits on this track that allows you to do really long precise cuts uh, and then just, just bolts or um, clamps to the side of your piece. So it'll hold, this track gets held down and you can do it. So I could definitely have used that on this piece, but it's small enough to just use with the table saw, which is why I'm using the table saw. All right, so we've trimmed the entire perimeter of this. You can see that we've trimmed enough to expose uh, the, uh, the wood edge here, but not the loose bark. Remember when we started this table, we took all the bark off the edges, the very fine edges, just so we would not expose any of that bark once we trimmed it. And that is obviously what happened. We uh, were successful in that. So we've got 35 and just over 5 eighths, 35 and just over 5 eighths. And we got 17 and just over 3 eighths, 17 and just over 3 eighths. So we have a really square table coming out of that mold and just having to trim it like that. Yeah, 39.75 on the diagonal both times.
Oops. Okay. Uh, sanded 220 grit. I'm just going to wipe the excess dust off of this to get ready for the flood coat. We don't want to flood coat this while it's damp, while it's wet. So we are going to let that dry. But uh, what we're going to do first is our quick time saving trick and rather time saving for uh, doing the final finishing of this once the flood coat is dry. And that is uh, taking uh, tape and going around the perimeter of the bottom uh, because what's going to happen when we flood coat is of course you're going to have a lot of drips and marks, uh, drip marks rather, coming down the sides from the resin going over the sides. Uh, so putting tape on the bottom here is going to make our job a heck of a lot easier when it comes to taking those drip marks off after the flood coat is set. I do cover that in one of our videos in the Epoxy Resin Wood Basic series here on YouTube, but you're just gonna see me do it really quickly. This isn't going to prevent sanding altogether. Uh, sanding the bottom pieces off altogether, you're still gonna have to do a little bit of sanding, but it's gonna be a heck of a lot quicker than if you didn't do this. And once I once we finish at the end of this video, once you, once you see me take it off, you'll understand why. white to dry off some of that water and then we're going to move this over to the other side of the shop where it's not so dusty and covered with resin particles and sawdust everywhere and do our flood coat over there. Setting up our area for flood coating, I've put down a piece of plastic because remember you're going to get a lot of resin falling off your piece and you want to raise your piece and make sure everything's level. If you have your piece not level, all the resin is going to come to one side and you're going to end up with possibly no resin on one other side. So I'm going to use some total boat mixing buckets, which are all the same level. I know my table is level. I know my concrete floor is level. Perfect. We're going to mix up our epoxy and of course my favorite epoxy for uh, flood coating is Maker Epoxy uh, by Total Boat and you can get this at TotalBoat.com and you can use our special discount code as well which will be at the end of this video. Now to calculate the amount of resin I need I would normally do length times width times a quarter inch divided by 1.8 to, to determine number of ounces. However, in reality, you're not going to need a quarter inch thick. Um, the stuff, when it sets, it's going to probably be an eighth of an inch at most uh, once it flattens out. So somewhere between an eighth and a quarter in that equation. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up uh, this material, which is a one to one ratio. Um, and of course, the Maker Poxy is very similar to Total Boat's Tabletop product. Both of them would work just as well whether using Maker Poxy or the Total Boat Tabletop Epoxy on this because it is a tabletop and we are flood coating it. We're going to go about 50 ounces, uh, one and a half liters. So I'm going to go three quarter liter of A and three quarter liter of B. And once we mix that up, that'll be one and a half liters. And that will be more than enough to top coat this project. I'm not wearing any PPE right now, but you should be. I'm only not wearing it because I need to talk and explain what I'm doing. But uh, once I mix this up, I'm going to get my PPE on. <sighs> Night trial, latex, or whatever gloves are going to be important, especially for flood coating, because you're going to end up using your hands on the resin. So you don't want to do that with your bare hands. A, it's not going to come off uh, very easily, if, if, if not at all. And B, it's probably just not good to be in your skin. So uh, put your gloves on. I've reoriented the camera here for the money shot. This is really where it's like the oohs and the ahs come. Because you have this really kind of 
murky opaque looking block. Once you add that resin and the top coat starts to fill out, it just looks pretty incredible. That uh, tie fighter there in the resin, which you can't really see right now, is going to become instantly clear. So we've mixed this up to the point where it's pretty consistent. We do have a lot of bubbles in there for mixing. But again, with this Maker Poxy stuff, just like the Total Boat Tabletop product, um, because we're pouring it so thin, those bubbles will either leave themselves or we'll use a heat gun or a torch just to get them out before we, uh, can before we consider this project done. I'm just going to lay down the resin. And you can just see it changes the entire top there. It's really the cool thing about flood coating. It's like a cheater way to get like a polished finish without actually having to go through the immense amount of work of polishing resin. I'm going to leave some resin in the bucket just so we can reserve that. And then we're going to work it in with our hands. Remember that this product is self-leveling, so it doesn't really matter. We just want to make sure we get good coverage everywhere. And the other thing is we want to make sure we go and physically work that resin in around the sides, the perimeter, and touch every part. Uh, otherwise, you could end up with this you know, surface tension issue where some of that resin goes over the edge but misses a complete section of it if you haven't physically worked it in there and broken any surface tension. So you want to definitely work it in with your hands and make sure you've covered all your bases, all your surfaces, essentially. I certainly would have liked to skip the whole slab leveling and, uh, well, the whole slab leveling process, but my impatience and my lack of paying attention here in the shop when I was blowing off all that material onto the floor led us to go with some other plans here. But either way, it took me a couple extra hours than I wanted to put into it to get to this point. But now it looks amazing and that's all that really matters. So we're going to let that go. Take the gloves off. We'll let it kind of level itself out and we'll come back uh, quickly and we'll hit it with the heat gun or a torch just to get all the excess bubbles out and get that resin moving. When you use a torch, just do it really quickly. Don't let it sit on the resin for too long in any one place. Otherwise, we'll end up burning the resin. So a heat gun is definitely a safe way to do this. Only use a torch if you have the self-control to be able to, uh, to wave it quickly. All right, so we're going to go ahead and let this sit here. I'm going to keep an eye on it off camera for the next hour or so just to make sure that we've got good coverage and that we don't have any spots opening up where I need to add some extra resin. I may need to, but otherwise that's it. We're really just, it's a waiting game at this point to let this resin set in 12 to 24 hours. We'll be ready to handle it and uh, put our legs in this table. Also, if you want to save your time uh, later sanding, Typically you do this after about half an hour, an hour, so while that resin's dripped down, but just go over with your stir stick and just get rid of all those uh, drip marks. You're still gonna have drip marks in the end, uh, but less is better. Less work is always better. We're back on Monday morning. This has been setting over the weekend and this flood coat turned out perfectly. It is literally flawless other than a couple little divots down here uh, where some air holes were. But what we're going to do now is finish this up by flipping it over and taking off the um, drip marks along the sides, which is why we did the tape preparation in advance. And you're going to see just why we did that and how it's going to save you time. So let's get our blanket set up. We'll flip this over and we'll go from there. So you flip this over onto a furniture blanket. The key is, you know, you want to use something soft, not something dirty, full of sawdust because you have your flood coat, so you want something that's going to be gentle on it. If you get something like a stone or some uh, material down there and it's going to end up scratching it, it's going to be a disaster and you don't want that. So all we're going to get uh, now is our heat gun. We'll get it set to heat. And what we're going to do is we're going to put our PPE on because we're going to be heating up the resin. And then we'll take off the tape and this, all these drip marks will come off as well.
So we've pretty much gotten all those drip marks off that had fallen down from the flood coat. We got a little bit of a rough edge still, which is expected, but I'm telling you, doing that tape method and heating up a tape and removing those drips that way is gonna be way less work than sanding them from scratch. So I'm just gonna get my sander and 120 grit sandpaper, and we'll just quickly go over the perimeter and take off any other uh, spare pieces that we might have missed or any sort of sharp edges. That's it. So the very last thing we're going to do is install a couple of table legs. I've got some legs from the Live Edge Timber Co, which is just liveedgetimber.com. They're a company in Quebec, Canada and actually laser cut and weld these legs automatically. So these are not made in China, they are made in Canada and you can feel it, they are much heavier duty than the typical Amazon legs. Now, the hardware that most legs come with are bolts like this or screws. I usually do not like to use those um, strictly because, you know, if you're building this for yourself, it probably doesn't matter. However, if you're attaching legs in your shop and you're about to ship this somewhere, you're gonna remove the legs and maybe you're gonna move one day and that, per or, or that your customer is gonna move one day, they're gonna remove the legs. So what happens when you use these bolts or screws is eventually the pocket that you've drilled in there and everything just loses its grabbing ability, it wears down. It doesn't necessarily wear the screw down, but it'll wear down the actual pocket that you've, you've drilled in, which is why uh, generally I use the Rampatec uh, threaded screw system. So these guys are out of Germany and what you're basically looking at is a threaded uh, screw that goes into your piece and then a hex bolt with like a, like a machine screw on it. And essentially that's what holds down your leg. The advantage using these is that this always stays, this receiver part always stays in your, your wood or your resin or whatever. It's never gonna come out, so it's never gonna get stripped. It's never gonna lose its grabbing ability. It's really just this screw that comes out of there, right? So it makes taking the legs on and off much easier. You could take them off 50 times and, and still have no problem. Not the same thing is gonna happen when you use bolts or screws. However, there's a problem with using this system uh, this way with this particular table because I have clear resin, right? The majority, I've got about half an inch of gray resin at the bottom, if you remember when we did the, the start of this table. So that's completely opaque. But everything after that is clear. So it's clear from here down, right? So if I use something like this system, I could use it in the wood, but if I, where the, where the lake lines up with the resin, if I use this, you're gonna see this in the resin. So unfortunately, because of that, really the only place I could reasonably use these and not having to see them is in the actual solid wood itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that just to demonstrate how this system is used, but I'm gonna generally uh, attach most of the rest of the legs, the other part of the legs, with some shorter screws. You really wanna get sh screws that are gonna fit uh, within the height of that first layer of resin because we don't really want those screws popping all the way through uh, and seeing them in the clear resin. I don't think it'll ruin the project, but it just won't look as nice, right? So we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate how to drill the holes for the rampa system, how to fix them, and then we're just gonna use plain old screws for the rest of the pieces that go into the resin um, that's gonna to be too uh, shallow to use this system on. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do, regardless of what, what um, fasteners you're using, is to line up your legs, uh, make sure they're the same on both sides, and pre-mark your holes so you can pre-drill them. I know these legs are 15 inches um, in, across, We've got 17 and a half, so you've got two and a half divided by two, uh, so one and a quarter. So you're gonna space these guys out one and a quarter in this case. Pre-mark our holes. We'll do the same on the other side. For the sake of demonstrating the Rampatec system, I am going to use these in these guys over here because they are in the wood. Keeping in mind that if this was a regular epoxy table and it wasn't clear epoxy, 
um, you used, say, a mica pigment uh, in your epoxy, you could use these all the way around because no matter what, you're not going to see through the resin, ideally, if it's, uh, if it's opaque enough, and you won't be able to see the screws. So in the parts that are actually going into the resin, I'm going to use these shorter screws, which roughly work out to the depth of the gray epoxy and the thickness of the foot on the tabletop. So we're just going to go ahead, we've already marked these out, we're going to pre-drill our holes using a bit that's smaller than the screws, of course, that we're going to be putting in. We don't need to go down too far in, these, in the case of these guys. Obviously, this is something you want to really pay attention to because you don't want to go all the way through the top of your table or the piece of your wood, right? So just make, and you can even, you can use a collar on these. It's a little metal adapter that screws on to actually limit how far you can go down with your, your drill bit. So I'm going to use the ramp system strictly for demonstration in these holes because this is our wood. I'm not going to use them here. Obviously, um, there doesn't make, there's no actual, actual real case to do this. It doesn't make sense to mix fittings on a table. You either want to use all of these or, or all of your bolts or all of your screws. I'm only doing that for demonstration just to show you the differences and the advantages to using this. If you can, of course, on your table. So you're going to want to get your bit that's uh, slightly low, uh, less than the diameter of this uh, rampa thread. If you don't want to use a collar uh, to limit your um, your drill bit length, you can just use a piece of tape and just make sure you only drill past that. Or up to that, rather. Next thing I'm going to do is get my countersink bit because these uh, ramper receivers have a little bit of a flange on them there. So they just typically work well with a countersinking. The six millimeter Allen key and wrench, which will match the six millimeter fitting on this threaded adapter. And then you're just gonna put it in, turn it by hand. Now, some people will go ahead and get super glue or epoxy and put it on the thread in advance. I'm not sure if it's actually needed. And a little bit of raised wood here will sand that off. So you'll see now the ability to quickly and easily attach those legs with your ramp of screws, assuming that they're the right length, right? And that's it. And that's it. So all you're going to do is tighten these things. Um, these ones are probably a little long for this particular table. So I'm not going to go ahead and put them all the way down. They do come in different lengths, obviously, but generally that's how the system works. And you can see the obvious advantage. You get your Allen key. It's almost like an Ikea system. You get your Allen key, take it in and out, and you can take the legs on and off. So after that quick demonstration on how those Rampa threaded inserts and uh, hex bolts work, we're going to go ahead and just attach the rest of our legs using regular old screws, which I hate doing, but we have clear epoxy. I don't really have a lot of choice. We've already pre-drilled our holes here, so we should just be able to grab our drill and those screws. guy over and here is our completed table with legs 
Hope you enjoyed following along with this video. I had a lot of fun making this particular project. Obviously a big Star Wars fan. If you wanna make your own Star Wars themed table and use these uh, little models, they're actually not micro machines. They kind of look like micro machines. If you're a kid of the 90s, then you probably know what those are. Um, they are actually made by a company called Fantasy Flight Games and pretty much everyone I know that uses epoxy resin or urethane resin for wood turning or making tables and, and using these types of Star Wars models are from the same company. What do you think, buddy? Yeah. Is it good? Whoa. Yeah. Is there stuff in there? Mm-hmm. Cool. Oh, is there is there a model in there? Well, we've completed all four epoxy resin wood projects that we set out to complete at the beginning of this video, which means we are officially at the end of the video, but we are also at the end of our 11 module epoxy resin and wood basics video series here on YouTube. I hope during the course of this series that you learned a lot. It was informative and easy to follow. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below in any of the videos in this series. And if you wanna get a hold of any of the molds or templates that we used in this series, you can of course do so at craftedelements.com. However, if you wait to the very end of this video, there's a special discount code that you can use not only on Crafted Elements molds and templates, but also on the total boat epoxy resin that we use throughout this video series. If you want to get your hands on some of your own epoxy resin from Total Boat, you can do so at TotalBoat.com. Again, I'd like to thank you for following along. And if you haven't already subscribed to us here on YouTube, now is your chance. Just hit that like button to tell us how much you like our content and make sure you hit that subscribe button because we are always developing new videos and new content using our molds, templates, and other advanced resin and wood techniques. So this is me officially signing off of the Epoxy Resin and Wood Basics video series. Thanks for watching and happy making. Wait, you made it all the way to the end of this video, which means you get an exclusive 10% discount on anything from craftedelements.com or totalboat.com. All you need to do is enter coupon code ERWBVS at checkout. That's ERWBVS. This coupon code is going to get you an instant 10% discount on any of the time-saving molds, templates, or tools at craftedelements.com. Or head over to totalboat.com and use the code to get some amazing epoxy resin at a 10% discount.